What's good, my people? Another day at the, uh, what we call it, the Thug Mansion? You already know. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. The infamous Thug Mansion all over radio, all over studios. Um, we're here with my partner, OB. Yes, sir. Mary and me. My brother, the God Caution 700. Yes, sir. Uh, we got a special guest here today. Um, shit, Dallas is motherfucking worldwide, pretty much. Thanks, Where you got shit going? Um, what do I say? Where do I even begin? I could give you the super ill introduction, but at the same time, my brother, I mean, it's like really nothing I can say, but nice. Dallas on, the King of Cosign Magazine, hey. Mr. KG. Hey, I like that. I appreciate, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Appreciate that. I appreciate man. you coming through, my brother. Man, it's been it's been a it's been a while. I've been hearing about you, I've been seeing about you. I see the magazine, I see the stuff online. Um, it's cool seeing a brother. Skin, skin color, skin tone, everything, doing this fucking thing. Man, I appreciate that, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing like it. I mean, you see magazines nowadays or people in power, yeah. and they're not the same complexion as us. That's real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And especially coming from the regions of the map that we own. So I applaud you for that, man. I want to give you your flowers. And just like we was having in the, uh, the conversation we had in the, um, in the elevator. Yeah. I seen where you came from. It like, made, early even though you didn't see me, yeah, yeah. I, I seen where you came from. You would just say making grills, like making grills. What was that experience? One. Yeah, what was that experience like? Man, so a lot of people don't know, bro. Yeah. So when uh when I moved here, so I'm originally I'm originally from all over, but I went to high school in Colleen, hey, Texas. Yeah, I moved here. Uh, I had a cousin out here named Katie. He was yeah. doing grills. Shout out to KD. Yeah, so he had a spot in the Six Flags Mall. Matter of fact, that nigga's a, a like a, forget. I, I know, but a lot of people don't know. He was. The man are doing the grills and shit, right? Bro, he was like, I don't want to say like the the adopter of grills in Dallas, but yeah. he was like early on. Talking about he was doing grills in like ninety nine. That's what I'm saying. Nah, I'm gonna say the nigga yeah. was the man, OG, right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, every time I seen the grill or somebody having to do the grill, it was that man. nigga. The flyers and everything. Man, so, yeah, yeah. so, so he been on this joint for a long time, man. So when I moved here, bro, I actually got in trouble when I was eighteen and got arrested, and that mm -hmm. kind of prohibited me from like actually getting a job. Right, right, right. So right. I let my cousin like, man, come, you know, what I'm saying, come do grills with us. Mm -hmm. So man, so salute to him because he honestly like. Got me into like entrepreneurship right. and, and, and hustling right. and being out there because I was, I used to hoop, so I was just like, mm -hmm. I'll hoop and I was about girls. So outside right. of that, bro, I right. wasn't about to be right. begging nobody Facts. to buy nothing from me. I ain't trying to sell you nothing. I'm, right. I'm cooling. So. If I'm not mistaken, what was that? Probably about 2007? Yeah. That is who you thought it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. remember I told you, me and Juice was working. Rest in peace, Juice. But yeah, me yeah, and Juice was working in there. And like I said, yeah. I, I told my, my man Carson this artist. I was like, I think I've seen this nigga yeah. before. Nah, many times, man. many times. And then I asked him, like, so yeah. crazy, small world. Me and him always remember seeing somebody small and end up running into him years later. So I told him when he came. I mean, earlier today and I was sitting up he was like man I did my research and he uh this nigga somebody I said yeah bro yeah. I said that's one of the ones right there yeah, like, I don't know yeah, how you yeah. work that out but yeah. nah for sure and everything like I told you when you came in you know everything that I watch from afar you know you see people doing things within the same realm of each mm -hmm. other you see what I'm saying and mm -hmm. so to see you do it and the things you do I just seen you venture into music the right. award show man. you mm -hmm. know shout out to all of that bro the functions I'm kind of jealous of the Hennessy events I've been saying <laughs> right, I, I, right, I want right. to tap in on one of them one day mm -hmm. yeah. but nah man and definitely big shout out to you and a lot of like my brother said what we do here is give flowers to everybody that comes mm -hmm. through so yeah, yeah, yeah it's love man so, so at, at 2000 what was it so 2007 2008 you said you with the grills where was was there the the seed of the magazine or was it just kind of not was it even there yet man so so while i was doing that i was going to school and i was also like interning for like uh universal music at first mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then i met somebody from uh ozone magazine which right. her name was jan river city she was like uh she wasn't the editor but she was like right under the editor mm -hmm. and i told her what i want to do so she actually gave me an opportunity to work for ozone magazine so i used to go like to all these events passing the ozones taking pictures of people holding the ozone magazine right right and that was like my first shot the way i really Really knew I wanted to be in the magazine business. Okay. Early on, I knew, but I wanted to be a psychologist until my AP psychology teacher told me, like, you know, that's eight years of school. Oof, and yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. And I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> right. I ain't doing that. A different type of time. Yeah. Right. She was like, think about why you like psychology and what you can do around there. And mm -hmm. she was like, you know, psychology is like the study of people, the study of their minds. She was like, marketing, you can study people's buying behavior, their habits, right, you know, right. journalism allows you to talk to multiple different types of people. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, man, that's actually cool. So I looked into marketing and journalism and decided to go that route. So right. that was my early seed that got planted right there for like that's the magazine what's business. So. That's what's up. So I'm gonna say, I'm doing my research, 2011, yeah. you kick off 
Or you would initially start Cosign. Yeah, so 2011 was like the first iteration, I mm -hmm. call it, like mm -hmm. the first version. Had no idea what I was doing, but I was like, mm -hmm. man, I'm gonna just jump out on Faith and try this. Right. So, um, so was it always? I mean, was it always called Cosign? You know, so like, see, I, yeah, the homie a rapper, so it's like everybody changed their rap. Was it always? Nah, one it, was, it, was, name? it was always Cosign okay, from day okay. one, and, and that's that's all due to my sister. Yeah, so respect. When I was trying to find a name for a magazine, I just got I mean, my stories all over. But I, right. I left 2009, went to go overseas in Afghanistan mm -hmm, to make some mm -hmm. money. I came back, I had a little bread saved up, and my mm -hmm. older sister needed a car. Right, and she was like, "Can you cosign on the car for me?" Mm -hmm. And I like hell nah, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. but I understood the importance of a cosign. Mm -hmm. Like man, I want to be like, I want to provide a platform that can do that for entrepreneurs, creators, artists. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people who trying to get into the game. I want to cosign them to kind of help them get in the game. So because she asked me, that's where the name came from. Cause right. Before that, I had like some crazy names. I was thinking some lame stuff like <laughs> like Showcase Magazine. Yeah, you know, yeah. like all that lame stuff that you try to like brainstorm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not to me. Yeah, yeah I mean, but, what you making? Right, yeah, right. Yeah, what you make it, well. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to be like different credit. Like if you type type in stuff like that, yeah. a million things gonna pull up. Mm -hmm. So I like, man, what I know. Like, oh, the showcase kind of sound like a porn magazine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, you yeah, think yeah, about yeah, a showcase, yeah, showcase, you got a, a, a broad on the front. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So I, I feel you. Nah, nah, facts, bro. But um, but yeah. So I did all that, man. Came up with cosign. So 2011 was the first iteration, man. Mm -hmm. Really know what I was doing. Um, and then over time, it just progressed and changed to different things. So. Mm -hmm. To where it became like really official, official to where I feel like Cosign made a stamp was probably 2017. Mm. First six years, I was just really just BSing. I was working, right, right, working right. too, um, and just doing Cosign on the side. So 2017 okay. was really when things changed for me. I read, I uh, seen an interview you said what you didn't really find your niche until you started doing what events in like 2014 or something. Yeah, if I'm man wrong, man did his research. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nah, Get for busy. sure. So basically, what happened was the first couple. Year, like I said, I had no idea what I was doing. Right. So we were doing magazines, but they weren't really moving. The only time mm -hmm. they were moving was if the people were featured in there. So I'm like, man, okay. the consumers okay. really wasn't really rocking with it. Um, I mean, they want they they wanted interviews and stuff, but like mm -hmm. the consumers weren't highly engaged. Right. So I ended up uh, getting tapped in into like the the. I guess you can call it like the hipster scene in mm -hmm. Dallas mm -hmm. when it was really popping and there was this group named ADD. You yeah, know they are. yeah, they are. yeah. So salute to ADD. Yeah. Shout out to the men. Yeah, so when I got connected with them, I was like, bro, like, man, I feel like the whole city of Dallas really needs to know about this guy. Like, yeah. they were making some crazy moves early on. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when I got them to agree to be on the cover, like at the at the height of their career, right. I like nah, this this issue can't go like overlooked. So mm -hmm. I'm like man, we got to do something to tie it all together. And I'm like man, let's just do an event. So we did a free event at this art gallery. Mm -hmm. um, they were on the covers. I printed the cover out like real big, put mm -hmm. it in like a frame. I gave it to them. I didn't even have no sponsors back then. We yeah. created some merch. It was like a free event, but you had to like buy liquor, buy merch. Right, and, uh, right, right, right. Bro, we we had about two hundred people our first event ever. Ooh, yeah. yeah. That's and I'm like, like, man, cool. crazy. I mean, we made a little bread. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, I see the difference. The light bulb came yeah. on. Yeah, and we saw the magazines because yeah. they were there. Yeah. And yeah. people could actually see it. They're like, okay, all this is free. And all mm -hmm. I got to do is buy the magazine. But they want to show love. So after that, I'm like, oh, game changer. Mm -hmm. And I really mm -hmm. got into the event business. Okay, that's dope. So mm -hmm. I did, like I say, research. You said $5,000. For a thousand copies, yeah, man. Early Five thousand dollars for a thousand copies. Yeah, man. I maxed out my credit card. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I maxed out my credit card. <laughs> for that. Early on, I was one of the people like, man, I'm gonna go broke behind this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which was. It's a hustler's mentality, bro, but it's also the wrong mentality. Right, right, you know what right, I'm saying? right. Like, instead of trying to go broke for something, you got to think, I'm going to go rich over this. Like, right, I'm just invested right. in this. So I'm like, I'm going to spend whatever, not really calculating my moves. Right, right. But messed up my credit card, it was in the red. Mm -hmm. But um, but it was it was basically like me trying to prove to myself that, okay, if I can spend this and put this out, if people rock with it, I'm in the right business. And mm -hmm. I got a lot of traction from it. Exactly. It didn't turn to dollars immediately, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but as far as brand awareness, it did what it was supposed to do. That's right. what's up. That's what's up. So initially, when you got this, this, you paid this money You got the hard copy In your hands What was that feeling like What was that initial feeling like 
man, I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah, man. Right, right. <laughs> this is it, man. Because everything else before this has been has been safe. You Just know, like know. overseas contract job, uh, high school. I played ball and worked at Sears. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a, did a call center job for like a day and quit. So everything was safe. So this was like the first time that I actually like put my money on myself. You know, mm -hmm. like before then I was just you know I was comfortable. Like I always had I always had bricks. I always worked. Mm -hmm. You know, right, so right. Um, to not know how I'm gonna get this bread back, right, was right, different. But um, but mm -hmm. once I did, I kind of knew I was in the right path because it's like I'm gonna control of this. That's right. super dope. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, another question. If I'm one entrepreneur of the year in 2023, correct? Who? Entrepreneur of the year in 2023? Who, me? Yeah, is that you? Oh, yeah, from, uh, oh, it was uh, one of the awards. Yeah, Amethyst yeah, mm -hmm. Kayla, yeah, yeah. No, 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 it was, it was one of them, I'm sorry, for whoever it was. <laughs> <laughs> they won the two many awards. Right, right, yeah, right. Like, 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 wow, I yeah. got like two awards last year. One right. was Amethyst Gala, I can't remember. I think that was the media one. It mm -hmm. was, um, Man, Urban Hydration did an awards. It was one of them. Yeah, I, forget, I, I forget who did it, but I just <laughs> seen Entrepreneur of the Year, yeah, though, and yeah, I was yeah. like, okay, my man doing it. Like, mm -hmm. to get that type of recognition after all this time, like, paying, knowing the dues that you didn't pay, yeah. shit that you didn't went through, like, that initial feeling, knowing that you're still not done yet. Yeah, facts. Nah, it, it was love, but I ain't gonna lie, I also feel like a little bit of imposter syndrome. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because like, I, I do a lot of work, I put a lot of time in, you mm -hmm. know, got a great team. But I also sometimes compare myself to other because I'm around a lot of entrepreneurs. Right, right, right. So I'm looking at other entrepreneurs. And I'm like, man, I know this person is doing eight figures. Mm -hmm. This person, you know, is, is is global. This person has like six or seven actual like brick and mortar locations. Mm -hmm. So it's like, dang, like I'm not there. Right, right. So like maybe they should have got it. But at the same time, it's like, man, I may not be a seven or eight figure entrepreneur yet. Right. But I've also laid the blueprint to where you know. Um, I'm providing value to a lot of people mm -hmm. and making a huge impact. Right, so, right. you know, also like celebrate the wins, even though sometimes I may feel like, man, all these acknowledgements mm -hmm. and, you know, awards are great. But, you know, sometimes you feel like, well, you know you can do more. Right, 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 right. Man, right. So, man yeah. that's crazy. Well, shit, congratulations for that. Nah, I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that. That's love, man. That's dope. Um, you want to be like, though, if you win some of the awards, you forget the motherfucker. Right. Man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know I feel bad. I'm like, I don't know which one. <laughs> no. Yeah. But this is one of them. I ain't even put you on the spot like that. Nah, it's, all it's, all it's all good. Um, Question: Do I got? I don't want to just keep making. Nah, sure you guys talking about brother. Do your thing. You okay. seem like you got it all planned out. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm over here watching too. Like, what you been asking? Yeah. Um. Today's in today's world, everything is pretty much digital. Yeah. Back in when you started the magazine, it was kind of we was kind of transitioning from mm -hmm. newspapers, magazines to uh, seeing it on the phones, being yeah. able to slide through it. How has that change been for you and Cosine? Man, it's crazy. So uh, it's 2024, and we we really just launched uh, last week. Just launched mm -hmm. a subscription for the physical magazine. Right? Yeah. So people say print is dead, but it's not really dead. It's like you got to find an audience for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. There's still an audience that want like the magazine on the coffee table, right? Right. Right. right, right, right. The whole tangible thing. So mm -hmm. that's kind of who we really focus on. Right. But we also made sure that we got that digital footprint for mm -hmm. those who don't want print. Like uh, for those right. who want digital, they can go on the website. We got podcasts. We on mm -hmm. YouTube. We do on um, blogs, articles, social media. So mm -hmm. we kind of got content for everybody wherever they want to find us at. You right. Know right, right. But Cosine is going to always forever print because it also separates us from a lot of other, you know, blogs and mm -hmm. companies yeah, out fact. there. You know, it's going to have that tangible item. So that's right. super dope. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite magazine growing up? But you know, you got the Double XL, the Source, Man. the Vibes, fucking. Nah, it was definitely early on. It was the Source because like the five mic system. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're pretty much the standard. Facts, yeah, facts. Yeah. So facts. I liked them, and then it transitioned to uh, Double XL just because they were like on the cutting edge. Like I like mm -hmm. kind of how Double XL felt, like how yeah. they did their covers. Yeah, right. Um, and then the last last era of magazines that was my favorite was Complex. Complex, uh, yeah. that's a fact. Oh, yeah, they covered all sides of culture, and I really liked it. Mm -hmm. For real, that's super dope. Yeah, uh, print is very influential. I think if you if you're in the business of print, it's more so like even going as deep as like newspapers and yeah. mm -hmm. going back into that or Sports Illustrated mm -hmm. and Slam magazine, mm -hmm. like those yeah. are like influences. Slam, yeah. that's mm -hmm. a fact. Yeah, I used to have uh, I used to have all the uh, all the hoopers, Penny Hardaway. For real, man. 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 wait for the slam. Man, man. that was it. Especially the, the middle with the photo, the, yeah. the poster. Uh -huh. Yeah, all them shits on my wall. Uh, yeah. Are you still uh, a physical copy person? Like, 
you still go get the newspaper and grab the, the magazine? Well, do you read other people's magazines nowadays? I do. Competition, I don't do, I I don't do newspapers. Okay. 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 But I will do magazines. But the magazines I'm buying now are more so like, um, I'm buying like, I'm buying magazines that's where like I want to start transitioning to. So like I'm buying like, um, uh, Vogue, mm-hmm. um, gotcha, gotcha. you know, I'm buying Max L magazine, uh, okay. just yeah, for like yeah. the quality, uh, to also like figure out like who their advertisers are, mm-hmm. Or, mm-hmm. Uh, what's in the magazines to like help me transition. Like, okay, like we got a lot of entrepreneurship and culture. What are they putting in their magazines to attract, mm-hmm. you know, say high quality clients? So those right, are the type right. of magazines that you know I, I purchased right now. Mm-hmm. So. That's all. That's all. And also because a lot of you know culture magazines stopped printing. Right. Like, like, you can't go get double XL. You can't no, go you get can't. you know complex anymore. So right. yeah, you can't. I think about it. Yeah. Dude, I did wanted to ask how does how did what you because I know you said you got into it with ADD and I don't know where that ended or you know what was the end of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I see you're still involved in music to an extent. Mm-hmm. Like right. what? Like what's the tie in there, and what keeps you involved in that in that side of it? Man, a lot of my friends are artists, so okay. it's like, man, okay. how can I still? How can I still provide value to you know my audience, but then also show love to the people around me? Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Um, so you know, my guy Ziggy, he's he's an artist in here. Jason yeah. Lyric is yeah. an yeah. artist. Uh, Joseph is an yeah. artist. Yeah, so it's like. I try not to like, so I'm like, well, I went through a point where like it was music, I wasn't touching it because mm-hmm. I couldn't, it wasn't profitable for me. Yeah. Right, right, right. And right, also right. like, I'm a fan of the, uh, I'm a fan of the art, not the business of music. Right. Facts. You I'm know, saying. so I was like, man, let me get out of music. But then yeah. I also learned that the art of the music business is also something I'm passionate about too. Mm-hmm. Right, right, so right. now when I interview an artist, if I do interview an artist, I'm, I'm going to talk about their art, but I'm also going to talk about them about the business side about okay if they got they just signed a deal like you know what made you want to sign that deal what's right, the splits looking right. like mm-hmm. was it distribution mm-hmm. or you know was it a full on label deal like these are the conversations I'm kind of having now right, mm-hmm. um, opposed to just you know you know when's the next album drop in etc right. so, no, I got you I got yeah you. because there's a tie in to what you do and I think exactly. I think a part of this whole thing especially in media if you have a certain um, level of knowledge yeah. then like you said if you're working with your friends or even people who you just admire you want to pass some of that off as well like mm-hmm. I may not be able to do it for you exactly. but I can tell you you know what I'm nah. saying which direction that you should be going in to kind of actually be profitable because not a lot of them even are aware of their business right, right. Nah, you know what I'm sure. saying like there's a very there's a very like basic level of knowledge of any kind of business outside of what you can see nah, you definitely. know what I'm saying so I do I do understand that and I, I do want to talk about the hooping thing bro because I do see you hooping Same, you know what I'm saying yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying 20 points man you know who to come out with. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a high school hooper you know like yeah. that type of deal man like, definitely I I hope my whole life, man, high school Hoover. Uh, my senior year, I definitely realized that I wasn't going to the league. Okay, yeah, I yeah. thought I was up until like yeah. 10th grade. Uh-huh. Right, right, right. Like, nah, man, yeah. Yeah. That window was still open. Yeah, 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 yeah man. That's a fact. But, um, but not nah, hooping my whole life. Even when I was in college and I moved here for college, I still like hooping leagues, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, open gyms, etc. Like, I'm never going to not hoop. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you will never stop. I yeah, think if yeah, it was real bro. to you, you know, the things you're passionate mm-hmm. about. Yeah, that, yeah those stuff. That's my first, basketball, my first love, man. Right, like, right. facts. That age going to slow you down, though. Yeah. Because that's how we was. We was hooping every fucking yeah. day, every other yeah. weekend. Started getting a little older, so I was slowing yeah. down, started skipping days. Now I show up at the LA Fitness when the old white man is there. <laughs> yeah. So I can still get a little shine. Shout out to them in there to let me yeah. beat up on them every Saturday so. morning. <laughs> I, like, I like hooping against scrubs, though, for the for one, because I get to practice things that I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I go hooping. Against people like I know I'm gonna kill. I'm like I'm gonna do all left hand today. Right, working, you know what I'm right, saying yeah. like all left going left to my left hand layups. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a fact. That's all I'm gonna do. So That's dope. That's yeah. a fact. Y'all got any events or anything like that coming up? Yeah. So May. 22nd uh, yeah. uh, releasing our next magazine okay. uh, it's going to be at Casablanca and Bishop Arts hey, uh, that's so that's and then June we in Chicago doing a, a magazine release mm. uh, in July hopefully if the paperwork goes through we're going to be launching our uh, our nonprofit, our foundation at this event with um, with EJ a high life and kiss mm-hmm. oh. and then you know war season is approaching so you know right. we're gonna look out for that too so October push. November some of your um People you done worked with, I got is Maker's Mark, Red Bull, Nike, Hennessy, Foot Locker, mm-hmm. FX. Yeah. How do some of those relationships come about, and how do those even? Yeah. How, how do you feel about that? Just having seen those, watching TV, see the yeah. FX, you go to Foot Locker, you see like, oh shit, not Man. thinking that I'm gonna have a connection one day. Right. Sip on Hennessy. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So how do those relationships come about, and actually inking those deals? Man, relationships and doing great work, man. Yeah, yeah. So, so my first, 
my first official sponsorship pay was with Hennessy. Mm-hmm. And uh, how that came how that came about was um, this dude named Miguel, one of my friends. Yeah. He was always a fan of the brand of Cosign. So mm-hmm. he was real close friends with the guy named Roman who's over Hennessy. Mm-hmm. And when Rome first got his job with Hennessy, he was like, man, I need help uh, curating events and I need help like connect with people in the culture of Dallas. Right. And he was like, man, Cosign is one of the best things out here. You need to connect with KG. Yeah. So uh, he invited me to Rome's first event. We came, I showed love, just, you know, met him, had a conversation and he gave me a shot at my first event. Yeah. And of course he blew it out the water. And Thanks. then from there on, he was like, man, I was kind of like his go-to person for Dallas. Like anytime he had an event, yeah. uh, media perspective, marketing, mm. uh, activation, like he'd always reach out to, you know, me or Cosign, which I mean, I am Cosign, but right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The order I got team you. I got you. to kind of like put it together and to kind of help amplify what he had going on, and then doing that work led to like other brands seeing it. Mm-hmm. Right, so, right. It's, so it's like a you know it's 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 really one of those things like once you got the first proof of concept, mm-hmm. people in the industry are going to see it. It's a domino effect. It's a domino right. effect, facts, man. Facts. And yeah, then uh, one of the most proudest, one of my proudest partnerships. I'm not going to lie. Um, and it wasn't even like the biggest bag because it wasn't really even the bag like that anyways, but it was with uh, Nike. Mm-hmm. That's only because like I like we saw about I come from hooping. Right, 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 right. Like, right. like you know, it's crazy when I think about it, man. Like back in the day, I wanted a, I wanted a Nike deal. I'm like, bro, I'm gonna be a Facts. Nike athlete. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then full circle moment to to do a, a, a deal and campaign with Nike. As, a, as an entrepreneur, yeah. like, still just, getting paid for it, too. bro. It's, it's mind blowing. <laughs> yeah. Matter of yeah. fact, now that I think about it, bro, I did two deals with Nike, bro, and one of them landed in a national campaign with Amari Cooper. So it's That's like crazy, man. And yeah. we talked about kids, so yeah. it's like. So I showed my daughter I'm like look They gave me these shoes I'm in this shoe campaign mm. This NFL wide receiver And she's like She's like that's cool nah. I'm like nah I'm like hold nah, on nah, Hold on Hold on You heard me Hold on I'm like hold on You can't Like your dad lit right there yeah, yeah, right. But she right. know kids are They hard to impress real, right? Right? But um, but yeah Working with Nike Really like man Really like one of those moments For me I'm like man I, I think I'm doing What I'm supposed to be doing mm-hmm. right. You know Because I still get to do All the things I'm passionate about that's dope. Basketball Clothes yeah, Shoes yeah. Entrepreneurship Business I could do from this perspective I don't, mm-hmm. I don't have to be an athlete to do it right? That's dope. you know so now for, for those, I'm sorry for those for, and this is one of those questions that I do like to ask people at certain levels of business right yeah. as you continue to do those deals I'm sure you know the 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 understanding increases with what oh, you're yeah. doing how you're doing it with do you see or is there any difference in them working with a young African American businessman as opposed to you see what I'm saying do you get any any anything man <sighs> Early, early on, I'll say this, man. This is with any brand, man. They're going to give you what you're willing to accept. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you're willing to accept exposure as a payment, right? You're going to get exposure that's as a, a payment. That's a you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, never be afraid to ask. Like, even if, like, even if it's just, oh man, I'm, I'm, I would love to do it. Sounds great. Do you have a budget? Mm-hmm. At least ask that. That's the the most basic thing you could do is ask, at least ask them a budget. Right, right. That may be like, no, nah, unfortunately for this campaign we don't. And then it's up to you to decide if you want to accept it or not. Right. Or they may be like, yeah, we have a budget and it's five thousand dollars. If you want to ask, you wouldn't even got that five. That's a fact. Right. You know, That's so, a fact. So I agree. I would definitely say that. Um, I would also say before you even like start to seek brand partnerships or sponsorships, already have like. Yo, your media kit together mm-hmm. and your numbers in mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got like a certain number towards like, okay, I'm not leaving the house under this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's so I know, okay, anything moving forward, if it's not this, then I'm not doing it. Right. Um, sometimes I will negotiate. My negotiation is a little bit different. Like, I'm still gonna get that number, but I might negotiate like, okay. I can't go no less than this, but instead of me doing it once, I'll do it twice for right, you. Right. Just so that we're right. both happy. You're mm-hmm. getting more and I'm right. still not leaving the house not without this number. No, yeah, that's, so, no, that's true. And a lot of that you'll learn as you go. You know what right. I'm saying? Like when I first, I know, like when I first started, I was just like, man, I just want to work with like these companies. Like right. Red Bull, I just want to work with Red Bull. Right. I, didn't, I didn't care they had a dollar or whatever. I was like, bro, just give me the product. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's why I asked because I'm, you know, a lot of times we get excited about those type of situations where it's like, hey, this is something I never done before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it goes back to knowing the business, but then you, like, how do you temper those emotions of like, yeah. ah, not, not, let me slow down and not jump into this situation right. thinking that they're going to put my face on some shit or put my brand nah. out there. Mm-hmm. I think what you said is important is to always ask. And people have this negative stigma about asking about budgets as it is too, though. So Mm -hmm. close mouths don't get fed. And it's a business, you know what I'm saying? But but I will say this, and I always preach this when I do like my sponsorship classes. Um, 
you got to have a proof of concept first, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I don't ever, I don't ever recommend somebody like on their first thing to go ask for like a lot of money, right? Like, right, I'll max out. Yeah, do it for any kind of sponsorship, right? Like, okay, in exchange for this product, I'm gonna show you what I can do. That way, you have a proof of a proof of concept, and you can show that to other brands moving right. forward. Because yeah, if you have nothing to show, like, who's to say it's going to be a successful project or campaign, True. or that mm -hmm. you even know what you're doing? Right. You know what I'm saying, right. and I feel like somebody, for example, like if I sponsor, let's say I'm like, okay, I'm gonna sponsor all over media, right? I'm gonna give y'all a thousand dollars, right? right. Mm -hmm. And then there's no results. I'm not. I probably won't work with y'all again. Right, right, right. right. But yeah, if I'm like, I'm a, I'm a sponsor y'all, but it's gonna be in kind. Like I'm gonna give y'all some services. Y'all mm -hmm. gonna give me some services facts, in exchange. Facts. Yeah. And then if it does, if it doesn't do well, at least it's only services. I'm like, okay, well, let's try this again. Right, mm -hmm. right. And we right. have a working relationship. Right. right. People mm -hmm. lose capital. You could ruin a relationship. Like yeah. That, right. Yeah. You know and, and that's one of them things that even and not to give too much behind the curtains. That's kind of how we started. Mm -hmm. And luckily, we were in business with somebody who didn't mind to kind of just cut ties and like, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't really make much, but. Right. You know, I still fuck with y'all type shit. So mm -hmm. no, that's a big deal, nah, man. Like sure, that's man. a huge deal. Nah, nah yeah, for yeah. sure, man. Cause I know like, there's been some times where like, man, I took some some money from people early on, and it didn't really like the return wasn't there. Like I ain't gonna lie, I'm like, bro, it, it didn't go well. And, right, right. You know. And then I'm like, man, I can't even go back to them for the next ones. I'm like, bro, they ain't really even right, get right, what they right. asked for this first one. Uh -huh. So a lot of times I try to prove the concept first. And once I know it's proven, mm -hmm. then it's like, hey, man, this is my fee because it is proven. I can show you it's Facts. proven. Right, right. I've done this five, six times. Facts, mm -hmm. Facts. And, and then that's, go from there. And that's it instead of a liability. Man, right, for sure. Right, definitely. All right, I got a couple more questions before we get you out of here. I want to talk. I said, keep take too much of your time. Nah, for sure, man. Uh, you said uh, awards season's coming up. Yeah. It's gonna be, if I'm not mistaken, the seventh Coast Hunter Awards? Am I real? Yep, the seventh. I think seven. Seven. Yeah, I got, three. I got six uh, awards. Yeah, three yeah. at Crown Plaza, three at the Hamptons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, year oh, yeah. seven. Year seven's coming up. What you got in time for year seven? Because I said, if I'm not mistaken, last year was what, a casino thing? Yeah, last, last, last yeah. night was a casino thing, bet on yourself thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we're still planning, but all I, all, I, all, I can, all I can say is elevated, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? In, in every aspect. Okay. So that's all I'm gonna say is elevated, whether you think of theme, mm -hmm. think of design, think of decor, think of the people, community. Right. Everything's gonna be elevated, man. So, you know, once we have that venue and everything locked in, definitely let y'all know, but November for sure. Yeah. Right. Uh, Dallas, uh, Houston will be in October. Okay. And then uh, we're, we're hoping to add another one more city. Uh, okay. To the mix, though. Okay, I was gonna say, yeah, I'm saying, throw us on the list if you can. Yeah, I'm saying, we definitely show up. We look good in suits. You look good in suits. My brother ain't loaded. We good. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. We good. Yeah. We good. Yeah. Um, also, if I'm not mistaken, La Vida Cosign? Yeah, La Vida Cosign. Explain that to me. So, uh, so my parents are originally from Panama, mm -hmm. country, yeah, yeah, Central yeah. America. No, no. So, yeah, we're black, but they speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Grew up eating Spanish food, right, Spanish right. Caribbean food. My dad actually still lives in Panama, so I like, go so. see him once a year. You speak Spanish? I speak a little bit. Okay. Enough to get Enough by. Enough to get by. Enough exactly. Get That's by. all I need. Sure. I understand yeah. that somebody talking shit about oh, you. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Facts. Facts. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> so, <All right. laughs> so, I wanted to launch La Vida Cosign for like the Latino community. For mm -hmm. one, uh, to to really like tackle some stereotypes and ignorance that I've seen out there, like especially in Texas. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? When I used to tell people growing up, I was Panama, they're like, so you Mexican? I'm like, nah, bro. Nah, like, you know what I'm saying? Nah, fam. I'm Panamanian. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of cultures to where black people are Latinos. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And it's not and we're not it's not like a it's not like an and thing, right? Like right. I'm not black and Panamanian. Mm -hmm. I'm a black Panamanian. All you right. know what I'm okay. saying? I got so, you. I got you. So La Vida Cosign is basically like the same thing as Cosign, but it's a platform just for like Latinos to mm -hmm. like That's educate, cool. uplift, and empower, you know what I'm saying? And to just show people like, hey, you know, there's there's cultures everywhere and we just want to tie it all together. Like so right. we represent the black and Latino culture through and through Cosign. Yeah, super dope. Yeah, yeah, super dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got hit everything. Um Shit, last question. Um, call sign word. Actually, two two questions. Let me ask yeah. you this one first. Um, today, twenty twenty four. Would you go back and say to eighteen, nineteen, twenty year old KG if you can go back and hit mm. the time machine? Man, that's crazy. My uh, my chief creative officer of La Vida Cosa asked mm -hmm. me this. And uh, she like, but I want you to uh, think about it in Spanish. I like, hold on, give me a second. <laughs> 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 give me a second. But to answer, it's crazy. I didn't even answer her, but I would say 18, 19 year old KG, I would tell him, man, uh, man, stay diligent mm -hmm. and uh, and be smarter. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? 
And what I mean by that is, man, I've, um, throughout my career, my life, man, I'm definitely one of those individuals, one of them hustlers too. It's like, man, I made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I got it back, mm -hmm. lost it again, mm -hmm. and got it again. You ain't gotta go through that. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, you right, you right. ain't gotta be one of those people. Like, I know they see it, they post it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not a real hustler if you don't, you know, uh, get it and lose it and get it back. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't wanna do all that. Hell <laughs> nah. Hell nah. Hell nah. I don't wanna do it. I wanna get it and keep it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So be smart about your investments. You know, be smarter about the people you work with. And don't take everything for face value. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, you know, just like Facts. just like I strive to prove to everybody why I deserve to be where I'm at. Mm -hmm. You know, people gotta do the same for you. Just Facts. because they tell you, oh man, I'm a multi-millionaire, I can do mm -hmm. this, this, and this, Facts. don't mean it's true. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So Facts. there's been two two instances in my in my career, bro, to where I lost a lot of money to where like, man, mm -hmm. they shouldn't be walking. Right. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> right. they right. shouldn't even be existing. So <laughs> right. that's something that like, you know. It don't matter if I'm a, a millionaire, multi-millionaire. I'm, I'm never gonna forget that because, right. like, man, you 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 didn't take from me. You took from my daughter. You took from my family. Mm -hmm. Like, exactly. you try to take me out. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's like it ain't about the money no more. Now it's about the principle. Exactly. Man. So principality. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was I would tell myself, man, just you know, you know, r r remain diligent, be smart about what you're doing, man, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, stay focused. You got this. Are you gonna sit there and kick it with 18, 19 year old twenty kg for a minute? Man, you know, your elder stare, you were like, nah, that nigga too wild. Man, you man, I, like, I was wild. Like, I, I was wilding back then, bro. Yeah. Like, That's I, what I'm saying. I told myself, I see you the top of machine. I'm gonna go ahead and tell him what I got to tell him. I'm gonna yeah, go bounce back, back, get back to the crib. Yeah. <laughs> I think I like I like twenty five year old kg. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 18, yeah. 19 kg. He was wild and trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. Too Just much to uncertainty. Yeah. Yeah. I like that version of yeah. me. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, but um, I wasn't I wasn't scared though. It's like when you young, bro, mm -hmm. you just you you fearless. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. You're fearless. But I'm gonna tell you nigga shit. Fear is okay. Yeah, 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 it is, bro. Fear is okay. Fear open your eyes up a little nah, bit more. Real. Start making you realize other things. Nah, uh, thanks. Last question, unless y'all got something else. No, nah, you good. All right, like I said, uh 2024, where do you see Cosan, KG, um, La Vida Cosan, mm -hmm. the uh podcast studio you have mm -hmm. where do you see that 10 years 20 years from now mm, 10 22 man. global media empire mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so you know offices dallas mm -hmm. new york mm -hmm. miami panama colombia puerto nice. rico shit, somewhere in europe uh i see me out the game mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying out the game uh the outstanding team doing what they're supposed to be doing um i see my daughter taking over Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a question I was going to ask. I was saying at one point because you see a lot of people get up there, build the brand up so high, and then they sell it. Yeah. Is it going to be one of those you going to sell it? Because everybody got their number, or is it going to be I'm going to keep this for a little mom? Man, you know what I, what I said? I'll never a hundred percent sell Cosun. Mm -hmm. So I will sell enough to maintain you know majority rights to it. Right, right, I right. still put the family on. Okay. But if that number right though, yeah, you can have fifty percent. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you can have fifty percent. Like yeah, we yeah. split this. That's what's we up. We go half. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. But yeah, man, I just see, uh, honestly, man, there's nothing else I really want to do. Like, everything I want to do is within media. So it's like, okay. I have a space for it. Like, mm -hmm. like, man, if I had $100 million right now, but like I said, I'll be off the map creating documentaries. Mm -hmm. That's and still media. Me yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I'll, I'll still be, you know, I'll still be in the game. I'm never going to fully, fully retire. That's what's up. Okay, you saying that. I don't mean to cut you off. You saying that because I love documentaries. Yeah. What documentary? What you do? Man, so there's so there's so many, but like the, the number one documentary that I really want to do right now is to shine light on um on Afro Latinos in Panama. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and the reason why is that because the history is so rich. So right. uh, a lot of people don't know, like if you see a lot of black Panamanians in, around the world, so I'll give you an example. Uh he's played he used to be a Dallas Mavericks player, mm -hmm. Rolando Blackman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spanish yeah, first name, it'll be yeah. like an English last name. Mm -hmm. Because we we originally from like the English um, and then we moved uh, we moved to Panama right. to help build the canal right 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 you know what I'm saying once we got the canal built we ended up staying there oh, okay. and then you know like over time you start to adapt the culture mm -hmm. so so that's one reason and then there's another another reason too is like like there's like a black Christ in Panama which a lot of people don't even know about it's in the uh, it's a part of Cologne where my family's from called mm -hmm. Puerto Bello and it's all talking about it's like so much culture about like Africans in Panama uh, there's a lot of family Famous Panamanians that are black around the world. Like a lot of people don't know, Pop Smoke was Panamanian. Mm, yeah, you know Pop, what I'm saying? Recipe. Pop Smoke was Panamanian. If you ever seen, uh, I mean, everybody seen Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Right. There's two Panamanians on Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Ashley and Carlton. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they both mm -hmm. Panamanian. Um, 
uh, what's his name? He, he locked up uh, Casanova. To oh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Panamanian. So it's like, man, I, I ought to really just tell the stories uh, uh, of black Panamanians in the country, and then I uh, do some in America too, and just yes. tie it all together. And then outside of that, man, I want I want to do a basketball documentary, man. I want to do one on uh, on Penny and Shaq. Oh, yeah. that's your love too. So that's why you always really be in yeah. because that's what you really love doing. Right. So Especially on them two. Yeah, on them two. Man, Penny, Penny, definitely. Yeah. I'm definitely gonna type the text. Because a lot of niggas on him give that duo all day love. Bro. They'll that, bring it up, and they'll but they always refer to okay, bro, bro, we, Shaq and Kobe. Bro, they'll they uh, yeah. love Penny. We love Penny. Bro, 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 so yeah. we almost like Penny, mm-hmm. bro. So we know like bro, Penny was that dude. That's what I wanted to be like, man. I wanted to be like Penny, bro. Like. Mm-hmm. I had all the shoes. I'm talking yeah. about. I'm watching the commercials, mm-hmm. man. Uh, what was the movie? Blue Chips. Blue Chips. Yeah. You know what I'm, saying? I'm like, oh man, Penny's a guy, man. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, like Penny Hardaway. And then you know he coaching now, so I would love yeah, to do. Memphis. I love to do a documentary. A little documentary on Penny, bro. So I, I know, man. I, I know. Uh, I mean, I think it was. If I if I'm not mistaken, it was Shaq. One of them had an ego when it when it came to that. I can't remember. I think it was. It might have been Penny. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it was Penny. He wanted his own. Sean, I think when he got injured, Shaq became like the face. Uh, so I, I kind of want to uh, talk uh, about that, like ego too. Like, yeah, man, like yeah. look back on it, like the ego that, cause I mean, we all, we all deal with mm-hmm, it too. Exactly, right? especially the young guys. Man, the young coming, age. Coming out of college, getting all that money. It's not like niggas coming out of college now, you yeah. already halfway a million, some of them is, but yeah. back then you was, you weren't getting it, coming in straight to a million dollars. Like, come on yeah. now, it's a different ball game. Nah, facts. And then you got all these teams treating you like the man, treating you like, the, you, like you it. Like, yeah. nah, you gonna have that ego. Nah, you know facts. And then the last one, I ain't trying to go too much nah, on you time. Good, son. You good. The last one I wanna do, man, is, uh, is one on Big Tuck. Yeah, you know yeah, Tug. Yeah, Tug. <laughs> yeah. Tug, man. Tug, my God. So, yeah. hold on, my man. I'm sending him this, man, so we can mm-hmm. go ahead and make it happen, bro. But, like, yeah. if you think about just like the the history of Tuck and Dallas DSR, mm-hmm. DSR, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. history. And, but now, what's, what's crazy is, you know, like, generations have, you know, have changed mm-hmm. and developed. People still know about Tuck, Southside uh-huh. Aurelius, you Southside know what I'm saying? Tussle, Brad Stains, like. We was at one of his last concerts, not the last concert, one of the concerts, what, last year was it? Yeah, yeah. the one yeah. at the nines. Yeah, and then people were still in, in, in the stadium, oh, like, in the crowd, people like, still. the song came out yesterday. Yeah, like, yeah, it was still sure, singing word for word. And artists, artists still show love. Biggest the plug brought, uh, brought him out, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Tay Money be bringing him out. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. he's one of those people, he's gonna be a staple in the city, man. And I just wanna, like, talk about the complete story from. You know, the seven million dollar deal with Man. DSR, to, you know that falling off. To you know, Big Tuck start off in a, like an actual band. Like yeah. he's a musician. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. He played a drum. Like he, that's crazy. Yeah, he's that's solid. Crazy. So man, just to talk about you know that journey, man. You know, and and of course we gotta talk. About, I ain't gonna say my man. Like no, he ain't fall off. But right, you know, people right. wanna say like, okay, bro, like what about the decline? Mm-hmm. Tuck's mm-hmm. still getting money. No, People don't know yeah. about Tuck's deal. Still, I believe it. Yeah, you know I saying? believe it. Shout out to the homie G Lo too. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Shout out to G Lo, man. Yeah. G Lo, he always showed us love every time we yeah, interact yeah, with G Lo. Nah, he shout out to, I just saw him last week too, mm-hmm. man. So yeah, shout out to him yeah. too, bro. But like that's really what I want to do, man, man. Like I, I said, think that Tuck that Tuck documentary would be hell because I mean don't nobody really ain't nobody really highlighted. Yeah. That, so I I'm think Dallas hip hop history in general, like if you if you really look at it like the, the pioneers and the people that really mm-hmm. laid the foundation mm-hmm. here, a lot of them go unknown. Like you know what I'm saying? Even yeah. talking mm-hmm. when we talked to Rakim about his dad, like a lot of people mm-hmm. don't know that Big Al was mm-hmm. and, and who Nemesis was, you know what I'm saying? They think they it's like the, the boogie movement, uh, mm-hmm. Pookie and Lucci, or what you know what I'm saying? They, they're thinking about that. They're not really tying in everything. So I think Tuck is. I, I feel like Southside the Realist is like the, the the Dallas anthem. You know what I'm right. saying? Like you play that shit anywhere. You get anywhere. the same. Anywhere. Anywhere. The same bro. result, bro. You so, watch Maverick games. You can hear that whole thing in the background. Bro. Like, Facts, man. And I'm talking about everybody knows it from like, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm in, I'm in I'm in culture, but I'm also in corporate, bro. So right. I'll be at ga- uh, oh, Gallus. Oh, sure. Don't play Southside the Realist. I'm seeing bankers. And, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Get up lawyers and get up talking about you yeah. know Southside you know so it's like, like hold bro, on like, hold on yeah, you know so, where we at right <laughs> yeah so it's one of them cultural movements man to which like bro we got to make sure that we putting people you know uh, um, at the forefront no matter you know what age or what timeline they're right. in in mm-hmm. their career bro but yeah. like, they help shape everything that we got going on right so, that's a fact that's right. a fact man so that's, that's what we're doing yeah. well like I said my brother um, we're gonna wrap it up with that I appreciate you coming through of course much man. love we appreciate everything you're doing with the whole magazine the whole appreciate movement you, man. And everything that you're doing um, keep it going more power to you appreciate you know it um, 
And just know when you work it, man, and you doing shit, I, I always want people to notice, especially people that's doing the right shit, that it's always somebody yeah. that you're inspired. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? Even when you don't know and don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. And I think us here, being right. here and being able to speak to you is a, a prime representation Hell of that. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, yeah, man, keep doing what you're doing keep and, doing you know, doing. keep following and, and, yeah. and keep supporting. You, you got an open door to all over. Facts, so, you know what I'm saying? Holler at us. You want to come through? You know, you can record corporate. If you want to just come talk shit, come talk shit. Yeah. I definitely want to talk shit. Call a few niggas, you know what I'm saying? It's all good. We can get on. I'm going to come through and start dropping names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start dropping names. It won't be the first time. It's good. You know what I'm saying? No. The last thing I want to say, if y'all don't mind, go ahead. You know, it, a lot of people ask me, like, how can you support Cosign? And I never really knew how to answer that question, right? Mm -hmm. But now now we do. Now we have something that I feel like anybody can support. So right. if you want to support Cosign, me, anybody on the team, you know, go to our Instagram, Cosign Mag, link in our bio. We just launched a mm -hmm. subscription. Mm -hmm. Basically, what that means is you can get every issue of Cosign directly to your door without ever having to worry about, you know, having to get at each issue release. Mm -hmm. It also includes, you know, free entry into every magazine we release we do, no matter what part of the town we're in, mm -hmm. um, access to all like them private events. So people say, man, how do I get invited to them dinners and yeah, to the yeah, yeah. events? And man, subscribers get first access, man. So please yes. subscribe. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You can get a magazine. We part by month. Monthly, so that's six issues a year. Mm. Um, Lincoln and Bob's extremely affordable. And like I said, it come with a lot of perks, come with all our events, all our mixers for free. Go. You know right. what I'm saying? So hit that Lincoln and Bob, subscribe, and let us support. Our goal is 100 subscribers, you know, within the next 30 days. So there it'll be 100 subscribers mm -hmm. in two months. So, you know, if y'all can, we show love. No pressure though, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's all love. Kick your IG and your Twitter and everything. X, my yeah, uh, Cosign Mag, C O S I G N M A G. That's mm -hmm. Instagram, that's Twitter, Facebook, Cosign Magazine, TikTok. Cosign Mag and then CosignMag.com. There you go. That's it. Oh, man. Appreciate y'all. Once man. again, my brother, I appreciate you. Shout out to yes, Cosign. Sir. Shout out to yes, you. Sir. All over. Yes, sir. It is what it is. Yeah. There you go.